so um, hello students myself my name is ankit kumar and uh, in today's lecture i will discuss about the more uh, preliminary concepts of the real analysis and uh, which are based on the syllabus of the msc first year so basically in today's uh, topic i will discuss about what is the main uh, motive of this lecture and what is the main objective of this lecture so first of all uh, i introduce myself my name is ankit kumar and i have completed my phd from motilal nagar national institute of technology Lahore. so basically in this lecture i will discuss about the syllabus which we covered in uh, which we will cover in previous in, uh, next few months and i will divide this syllabus into 12 lectures which we will cover in next three months so basically in first lecture i will discuss about the definition and examples so basically in first lecture i will uh, start i will discuss about what is the metric spaces what is its uh, uh, logics what is its strength and uh, basic concepts basic terminologies basic concepts of the metric spaces and based on this metric spaces i will discuss about the some most important examples of the metric space such as discrete metric space okay what is the discrete metric space what is its criteria and what are the most important examples of the discrete metric spaces and uh, after that bounded and unbounded metric space so what is the bounded and unbounded metric space what, what is its properties and uh, based on the definition of the bounded and unbounded metric space I will cover uh, about the most important examples of the bounded and unbounded metric spaces. So basically in first lecture, I will discuss about uh, the uh, definition of the metric spaces, next properties of the metric spaces, third examples of the metric spaces. After that, I will discuss discrete metric space definition and its examples. Okay. And third, and third point is the bounded and unbounded metric space, its properties and examples. So I hope it is clear, all of you. In the next lecture, in lecture two, I will discuss about the pseudo metric space, open and closed sets, convergent sequences, Cauchy sequences, and complete metric spaces. So basically, pseudo metric space open and closed set so what is the what is the uh, pseudo metric space open and closed sets convergent sequences Cauchy sequences complete metric space etc so what is the pseudo metric space what is the difference between the metric spaces and pseudo metric spaces so basically difference between pseudo metric space and original metric space, its properties, and its example. After that, I will discuss open and closed sets. What are the main properties of the open and closed sets? What are the most important theorems of the open and closed set? And what are the most important examples of the open and closed sets? OK. Uh, after that, and this is a Cauchy sequence, complete metric space. OK. So uh, what are the Cauchy sequences? and uh, what are the main properties of the uh, Cauchy sequence? Uh, we will prove that every convergent sequence is a Cauchy, but every Cauchy sequence is not a convergent sequence. And uh, we will prove that if every Cauchy sequence is convergent, if every Cauchy sequence is convergent, then it is a complete metric space. Then it is a complete metric space. Okay. After that, we will prove some of most important theorems 
which is based on the Cauchy sequence, complete metric space, and convergence. And we will prove some, we solve some examples, we will solve some examples of the complete uh, Cauchy sequences, complete metric space, and etc. So, what are the main consequences? What are the main results? And what are the main application of the Cauchy sequence and complete metric space in real analysis? We will also cover it. Okay. In third lecture, I will discuss about the first and second mean value theorem. So the Riemann Stelzis integral. Okay. So first, in this uh, in this lecture, I will uh, cover what is the Riemann integral. What is the Riemann integrable? And uh, what are the main properties of the Riemann integrables T? And uh, what are the main results of the Riemann integrability? Upper Riemann sum, lower Riemann sum, and uh, partition partition of the interval, divisation of the interval, sub-intervals, and uh, upper Riemann sum, lower Riemann sum, and based on the upper Riemann sum, lower Riemann sum, we will cover how, what are the upper Riemann integral and what are the lower Riemann integral. So upper Riemann integrability and lower inter Riemann integrability we will cover in this lecture. And lecture four, first and second mean theorem, mean value theorem. Okay. So basically, in, in fourth lecture, I will cover in this lecture, I will cover about the differentiation. Differentiation and integration of differentiation and integration of integrals some of properties of the integral third theorems and top So basically, in fourth lecture, I will discuss about the differentiation and integration of the integrals, properties of the integrals, theorems, and properties of the riemann stiles okay. Now. In lecture five, I will cover the most important concept of the uniform convergence. Okay. So what is the uniform convergence? Why it is important? Why it is important in real analysis? Okay. So first of all, I will discuss about the sequence of the functions. Sequence of real value. So, what are the real value functions? Sequence of the real value functions. After discussing the sequence of real value functions, we will find the limits of the sequence of the functions at infinity. So, based on this concept, based on this concept, I will discuss about the pointwise and uniform cut. So if it converts at a specific point, 
if it converts at a specific point which belongs to the interval, then it is pointwise conversion. If it satisfies all the conditions of the convergency, then it is called uniform. So basically, in this lecture, I will cover what is the pointwise convergence and what is the uniform convergence. What is the difference between uniform convergence and pointwise convergence? Kochi criteria. So uniform convergence and pointwise convergence. We will solve more and more examples. We solve more and more examples. Yes, if I do, that is why you justify it. You will clear your concept about the uniform convergences. After that, Kachi criterion for uniform. So there are many theorems for the uniform convergence. So here we will discuss about what is the Kachi's criterion for uniform convergence. What is the Kachi criterion for uniform convergence? MN test for sequence of functions. Kachi criterion of uniform convergence. So what is the Kachi's theorem for uniform convergence? What is its necessary condition? And how we will Prove the convergency of any sequence of the functions with the help of the Cauchy's criteria. Third, MN test for sequence of functions. What are the MN test for sequence of the functions? So, MN test for sequence of functions is the part where MN test for sequence of functions is the part where we apply a theorem which is known as MN test to the sequence of the functions and based on the conditions of the MN test we will prove or disprove that it is convergent or not convergent. It is that. So in lecture five, this is the most important part. Kachi criterion. Demand test. These are three most important part. After that, it is trust M test for series of functions. Abel's and the Chilets test for uniform convergence, uniform convergence and continuity, uniform convergence and differentiation. Yeah. So, in first part, in lecture five, I will discuss the sequence of functions, its limit, point-wise limit, uniform convergence, Cauchy's criterion for uniform convergence and images. So, this is a full course of the sequence of the functions and it's important theorems. After that, in lecture six. In lecture six, first of all, I will introduce to you what is the series of functions. Which series of functions hote hain? Series of functions hote hain. So, what is the series of the functions? How we will represent it as a series of the functions. So, based on the concept of a series of functions, we will solve more and more examples of series of functions. Examples of the series of functions. After that, this series of functions is convergent. Are diverse. 
is tested by some most important tests such as Ristras M test for series of so Ristras M test says that if modulus value of any series of functions is convergent, so less than sum of the numbers, then it will be convergent. So in the star M test, I will discuss how we will prove the convergency of any series of the functions. After that, Dirichli test. This is most important test for convergence of uniform curve. So, what is the Dirichli test? What is the Dirichli test? Basically, basically, Dirichli test says that if there are two functions, one function is sequence of function, and second one is a series of functions. If summation u1 and bn is given where u1 is a sequence and bn is a series. So if u n is a bounded function, is uniformly bounded function, and bn is a monotonically decreasing sequence and conversion to zero as n tends to infinity. So if both the conditions are satisfied, then we Say that summation un into vn is convergent. So, necessary conditions for Dirichlet test is that one function, one sequence of function is bounded, and another series of the function is monotonically decreasing and convergent to zero. So, on the combination of these two properties, we will prove that digital test is uniform convert. Digital test is uniform convert. What is the Apple's test? So, what is the main criteria of the Apple's test? This topic I will discuss about the criteria of Abel's test. In Abel's test, and there is also some necessary conditions for Abel's test. Uniform convergence and continuity. So what are the uniform convergence and continuity? Uniform convergence and differentiation. So uniform convergence and continuity. Uniform convergence and continuity. So how how the uniform convergence and continuity are related to each other? What are the main theorems of the continuity and uniform convergence? What are the necessary conditions for uniform continuity and uniform convergence? So is the continuity is necessary for uniform convergence or uniform convergence function is always continuity? So these types of the statements, these types of the theorems, we will cover in this lecture. After that, uniform convergence and differentiation. So what is the relation between uniform convergence and differentiation? So we will cover in this lecture. In lecture 7, uniform convergence and continuity, uniform convergence and differentiation and distress proxy based theorem is covered. Is covered. Okay. So basically, in this part, basically in this part, I will cover most important examples of the uniform convergence, point-wise Cauchy criteria, test, etc. So, first of all, I will cover the metric spaces, Riemann stages, integral. Mm -hmm. 
the most important topic of the real analysis is the uniform convergence. And after that, um, we will cover the Lebesgue measure and Lebesgue integral. So introduction, uh, what is the Lebesgue integral, what is the Lebesgue measure? If we need examples, measurable sets, non-measurable sets, what is the main criteria? What is the integral? So in introduction part, I will cover all the definitions, most important examples, and what is the outer measure, what is the inner measure, what is the length of the interval, what is the partition, what is the integral, what is the Lebesgue integral. So there are many concepts, many, many preliminary concepts, which we will cover in the introductory part of the Lebesgue measure. Because in Lebesgue measure, there are various terminologies are used. After that, we will cover outer measure. What is the outer measure? It's examples. How we will find the outer measure of an interval? Is also very important. After that, Lebesgue measure. What is the Lebesgue measure? What is its necessary conditions? And how we will cover it? Lebesgue measure. Outer measure, Lebesgue measure. Technicians and examples. So, first of all, I will cover the introductory part outer measure, Lebesgue measure, its examples, its basic definitions. After that, after that, I will solve some more preliminary concept of the problems, more preliminary problems, more difficult problems, which are asked in your examinations. After that, measurable set, what are the measurable set? What are the necessary conditions for measurable set? What are the non-measurable set? What are the necessary conditions for measurable and non measurable sets? So, there are many more properties of the measurable and non measurable sets. So, you will cover it. Yes. In lecture 9, it is the most important measurable thing. So, based on the measurable sets, in which we will cover what is the measurable set, what is the necessary condition for measurable set. As said, in lecture 9, I will cover what is the measurable function. What is the difference between measurable functions and measurable functions? What are the measurable functions? Definition and properties of the relative Definition and properties of the sets. What are the necessary conditions for the measurable functions? Definition and properties of the measurable functions. What is the Lebesgue integral of the function? Integration or non-integration. So in lecture, here I will cover what is the Lebesgue integral of the function. Integration of non negative functions, comparison of the with non So, how we will find the Lebesgue integral of the So, what is the Lebesgue integral and integral of the project functions and integration of non negative functions from the form of Lebesgue and Riemann integral into Riemann integral? So, 
Specifically, in this lecture, I will cover Lebe and Lebe integral of bounded function, integration of non-negative function, comparison of Riemann and Lebe integral. So basically, Lebe integral of bounded function is covered in this lecture. Integration of non-negative function. How we will find the integration of non-negative function? And we will prove the corruption of the demand and we will do this. And we will cover what is the basic difference between the demand and the What is the comparison between the demand and the So there are necessary conditions for demand and the So we will cover it. Let us and it is most important term which we will follow in the lecture. So, what is the Fatal Schema? What is the monotone convergence? So, Fatal Schema, what are the applications of Fatal Schema in reality? I will do Fatal Schema. Monotone convergence. This is the two most important topic for the lecture here. Basically, we will uh, prove this model with the help of the example, with the help of the examples. So, monotone converses to a thousand years. Except for the base from the model. So, we will check that. What is the Levy dominated convergence? Two basic concepts. Levy dominated convergence. So what are the basic concepts? What are the. In this lecture, I will discuss about what are the basic concepts. Examples. And application. About stated theorems in real life. Basically, in this lecture, I will cover basic concepts, examples, applications, and most solved problems of the above stated theorems, such as Fatau's lemma, monotone convergence theorem, Lipeck's dominated convergence theorem, and bounded convergence. So, its basic concept after study. After studying these stated theorems, we will solve some examples. Its applications part and some most important solve problems of the theorems. So basically, this whole syllabus of the real analysis I will divide in 12 lectures, and each lecture will cover some most important definitions examples, properties, and solve problems. So basically, these four things are available in, any, in each lecture. These four things are available in each lecture. That's why your concept is very clear in each and every example of the problem. So basically, I will start what is the metric space. So suppose, Suppose capital X be a non empty set, a function P such that X to X to R. Here we taken two maps. Here we taken the two spaces. And the product of the two spaces is mapped with the one space of R, which is known as a metric, provided for all X, comma Y and Z equals.
Suppose capital X be a non equity set. A function P is that X cross X to R is known as a metric provided for all X, Y, and Z. First of all, the metric P of X, Y is positive, it's greater than zero. It's positive. Second, P, X, Y is equal to zero. If only X is equal to Y coincides with each other. X is equal to y coincides with each other. Third, P X Y is equal to P Y comma X. This is symmetric condition. And fourth is triangular use of properties. Yeah? Triangle properties. Triangle infinite. So if we select any space and uh, the function P such that X plus X to R is known as being required for all X, comma Y and Z in X. So first of all, the distance between P, X, Y is always the distance is always mentioned. First statement is such that distance of the two points is always positive. Secondly, if two points are coincides with each other, two points are lies with itself, then the distance between the two points is zero. So if P of X comma Y is equal to zero, you find only X is equal to Y. If x y is equal to y, then p x y is equal to zero, and p x y is equal to zero, then x is equal to y. After that, p x y is equal to p y x. This is a symmetric condition. So, third property says that the distance, the distance is not changeable. Irrespective of their positions, we measure the distance from P to X, Y to X is same as the distance from X to Y. So there is no difference between X to Y and Y. So this is a symmetric condition. So in the space, the distance between the two points is same as the distance between the points if we change their positions. Third fourth property says that the triangulization properties are triangle inequality. So basically uh, triangle inequality says that what are the main concepts of the triangle inequality? So triangle inequality says that if there are two points x, one, y, and if we suppose we put a point z in the middle point of the x and y, then the distance between p x, comma y is less than or equal to p of x, comma z plus p of z, comma y. This is a triangular property. It's a triangle equal. A metric space is made up of a non-inequality set and a metric one set. The metric space is made up of a non empty set and a metric non set. So, if these four properties are covered by a set, covered by a space, then this space is known as a metric space. For any space, become metric space if and only if there are if and only if it satisfies the fourth problem. First positiveness the distance between the two points is positive. P of x comma y is equal to zero if and only x is equal to y if the two points coincides with each other and the distance between them is zero. Third property is a symmetric properties in which we will uh, we analyze that the distance between P X comma Y is same as P of Y and third proper fourth property is triangle is so the term metric space is frequently denoted by X comma P. The triangle equality for the metric space is defined by property code. 
So the term metric space probability denotes by x comma. What is x? X is a metric. X is a metric, and x is a space, and p is a metric. P is a measure. P is a measure, and x is a space. Basically, p is a function which defines from x cross x to r. And x is a space. So the combination of x comma p is known as metric space. Set R of real numbers with p x comma y is equal to mod of x minus y. It's the classic example of metric space. The classic example. So we define a function p x comma is equal to modulus of x minus y. It's the classic example in metrics. If the modulus value is always positive, if x is equal to y, then x comma minus y. So we define the function p of x comma y is the modulator x minus y. So basically, basically this function, basically this denotes the distance between the two. So first of all, the modulus value will probably always positive. So first condition. First. Second property coincides with each other. Two points are coincides with each other. Two parts of both sides in each other, then the distance between them is. This is a symmetry. The distance between P of X, Y is equal to P, Y, comma, is equal to change the terms here, P of Y, comma, X, then the function does not change. The function does not change. Because the modulus value is always positive. Because the modulus value is always positive. Mm -hmm. Pxy is equal to modulus of pxy. This is the triangle and equality part. Hence, the given function P x comma y is equal to modulus x minus y. 
satisfies all the four properties. Now, in this slide, I will cover what is the non linear space, what are the non linear space. So basically, what are the non-linear space? So a non-linear space, a non is a non-equated non non Dot on a linear space is for a Basically, a norm, basically a norm is a non-negative real value. Basically, norm is a norm is a non-negative real so norm on a linear space x for any u complete norm states and any real number a norm of u is equal to zero to ten norm. What is a norm? So basically, norm is a non-negative real value function. Non-negative real value function. Non-negative is it is positive including zero. Non-negative means is positive including zero. So a norm is a non-negative real value function norm on linear space X for any U comma V belongs to X and a real number A, norm of U is equal to zero if and only if U is equal to G. So norm of U is equal to zero if and only if U is equal to G. Norm of U plus V is less than or equal to norm of U plus V. Norm of u plus v is less than or equal to norm of u plus norm of p. Norm of a u is equal to modulus value norm of a into norm of u. So this is basically a modulus value. This is basically. So the norm of u is equal to u if and only if u is equal to u. Norm of u plus v is less than or equal to norm of u plus u. This is also a triangle inequality. This is a scalar multiplication. If you multiply it by any quantity, any constant, then the modulus value of the um, these constants um, bring outside and the norm is as itself. So norm a non-linear space is a linear space that has a norm. A non-linear space is a linear space that has a norm. A metric P on a linear space capital X is induced by a norm on capital X by standard. P X Y is equal to norm of X minus Y for or X comma Y belongs to X. The triangle inequality of for the norm is defined by the property set. Triangle inequality. So this given function, this given function, 
this given function is also null because it satisfies it satisfies Oh, it satisfies all the two properties. Because it satisfies all the three properties of the non-data space, the triangle inequality for the norms defined by property. So, what is the triangle inequality? Triangle inequality. Because this triangle inequality is also formed in the metric space and it is also non. So, first of all, norm of is equal to zero. If and only v is equal to zero, norm of u plus v is less than or equal to norm of u plus norm of v. And uh, norm of A U is equal to modulus of U of A into norm of U. A norm linear space is a linear space that has a norm. A metric P on a linear space capital X is induced by a norm on capital X by establishing this. And this is a function. This is a standard example of the norm of the space P X Y is equal to norm of X minus Y for all X comma Y belongs to X. It satisfies all the three properties of the non-limit space. And this is the triangle inequality for the norms defined by the properties. So this is the scalar multiplication. This property is called the scalar is scalar. This property is known as triangular inequality. So, matrix city are duplicate inequality. So, now now I am discussing the discrete metric space. What are the discrete metric space? So the discrete metric space P established for any 